Hello, and welcome to the second part of our discussion on handling interrupts in Linux. I'm Doug Abbott, your instructor. The principal topic of this lesson is what's called deferred interrupt processing. And we'll look at the mechanisms that Linux implements to do that. And then we'll see how our simple int example has implemented deferred processing. And then finally, I'll suggest an advanced exercise where you can do a little programming yourself, and that is to determine the interrupt latency of your system. Uh, good practice says that interrupts, uh, interrupt service routines should be short and fast. We want to get the device's interrupt re-enabled as quickly as possible, and we also want to get back into process context as quickly as possible because we have a better handle on the system in process context. So virtually all operating systems today divide interrupt handling into two parts. In Linux, these are called the top half, which responds directly to the interrupt, does things like get some data, um, clear the device interrupt flag, and then if there is any additional handling that needs to be done, it schedules what's called a bottom half. The bottom half then executes more or less at the kernel's convenience at a more opportune time. The bottom half mechanism has undergone substantial modification over the years to the point where the original bottom half mechanism is essentially gone. The two techniques that are currently in use are called tasklets and work queues. A tasklet is basically just a function that is scheduled to execute sometime later at the kernel's convenience. Uh, it is guaranteed to execute um, before the next timer tick. A tasklet runs in soft interrupt context, which means, again, uh, in this case it means hardware interrupts are enabled, but it must run atomically. It still can't sleep. A tasklet is represented by a structure that includes, among other things, a pointer to a function and a data argument to pass to that function. And then we initialize that um, structure with a call to tasklet init or this declare tasklet macro. And then when we want to schedule the tasklet, well, we call tasklet schedule, uh, passing in a pointer to that tasklet structure. The other mechanism is called work queues. Work queues run in a kernel process context, but in kernel space. Work queues are scheduled by the uh, Linux scheduler. And because of that, they can sleep. Uh, but they still have no access to user space. Work queues typically have longer latency than tasklets do because of the scheduling mechanism they use. When you create a work queue, the kernel creates a dedicated thread for that work queue. And then you can queue work on the queue with a work struct using the queue work function. Um, you don't have to create your own work queue. There's a, um, a shared work queue that uh, you can put uh, work on by simply calling schedule work. That's a little simpler, and in most cases is, is quite adequate. So let's see how our simple int example works with deferred processing. It starts out the same way. Uh, the write function simply toggles the output bits for each byte in the string, which generates an interrupt. The ISR now puts a binary timestamp into a second uh, circuit or queue and schedules the bottom half. The bottom half then reads data out of this binary timestamp queue, translates it to ASCII, and then puts it in the original queue. And then we read that queue and uh, see what happened. Um, 
The ISR in this case is also keeping track of how many times the interrupt has fired off until the bottom half is fired. And that can be a useful piece of information. So we'll see that as well when we get there. Do bottom half at line 200 is the function in, invoked by both the tasklet and work queue mechanisms. It, uh, it writes the current count uh, out to the text buffer and then transfers everything from the binary buffer uh, to the text buffer. And finally, it wakes up uh, whoever is reading, uh, waiting on the read queue. Now, there are separate ISRs for both the work queue and the tasklet. They both do the same thing, uh, but one schedules uh, the work queue and the other schedules a tasklet. The tasklet structure is initialized as a static variable above the uh, TL interrupt function. And the work queue is initialized in the um, initialization function with the init work macro. Let's see if we can find that just for the record. There it is. So, give it a try. Um, again, all you have to do is remove simple int and ins mod it. This time with a parameter tasklet equals one, um, echo text to dev port zero and cap port zero. Do the same thing with the work queue and see if you see any difference. So once again, it's your turn, give it a try. Okay, here's an advanced exercise. Um, right now, the uh, uh, simple int is measuring the time uh, between interrupts, okay? It might be more interesting to measure the interrupt latency, that is the time from when the interrupt is actually asserted until the ISR starts executing. That's not terribly difficult to do. Why don't you give it a try? All right, let's review. Um, Fundamentally, interrupts are asynchronous. That's what makes them difficult. Interrupt handling does not occur in process context. Uh, like any other resource in the system, we have to register an interrupt handler before we can use it. The bottom half is a mechanism for handling lengthy interrupt processing while allowing the interrupt source itself to be re-enabled. The bottom half executes some time later, more or less at the kernel's convenience. And there are two bottom half mechanisms in Linux, the tasklet and the work queue. That's it for this time. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.